Occupy Wall Street. Greetings. We need to, with a dangerous time, a period when we need to have a deep understanding of what is happening. We are the 99%. We are the community. Let us start from there. We are the community. We are the hidden community. Not the community of money and wealth and the criminal ownership of land and the criminal ownership of the means of production and the criminal production of food and drugs that turn us into zombies. Let's face the issues. By their fruits ye shall know them. So we are the community and the first issue we face is police violence, police brutality, mindless police brutality. Mindless police brutality. Psychopaths. Attacking a peaceful protest against inequality. Against the fascist ruling elite, the tyranny that controls our lives and is setting out to destroy us, destroy us as a group, as a community, and our families, and our friends. So let's look at first of all the police brutality. What do they think they're doing? Who is ordering them and training them and sending them in against us? Obviously just to intimidate and violent and terrorize us and put us in great fear of them. There's no other motive. It's just futile, isn't it? That's why our videos of them are so effective. Because we expose their mindless violence. They are the thugs. They are the violent criminals on our streets. They are the community terrorists. Calling them community police is a joke. Absolute joke. Now we are the community. And they are attacking us. Who is controlling them? Who are they protecting? But we know who they are protecting the tyranny that rules over us. Now the next issue is stop and frisk. Again, just to instill fear into the people. Into the people, the young men who are likely to rebel and revolt against this tyranny. The young black men. But it is to stop the spread of ganja. To criminalize ganja, criminalize marijuana, cannabis sativa. Cannabis is the holy tree of life of the book of Revelations. It is our holy communion. It is not intrinsically antisocial. There is no justification for it being illegal. A 50 50 vote in California, you know, shows that it is not a crime. You wouldn't get a 50-50 vote on any other so-called crime. So the police use the stop and frisk to steal marijuana and to put the young men in fear. Psychopaths ruling by fear. Bullies ruling by fear against our community, against our young men. Next issue, homelessness. Homelessness. And really, homelessness should be grouped together with health care. You know, the lack of health care. That people should just be allowed to starve to death. 
thrown away, attacked, abused. The first sign, the basic sign of our humanity, of our good mental health, of our good spiritual health, is concern for others. When we face with our own distress, then we show concern for others. When we face with our own death, we show concern for others. We show concern for others. Leaving people homeless is, show, is the society showing no concern for others. And they are brainwashed us into not seeing the evil that we pass by on the other side. The great evil of not showing concern for others. Life is lived by changing places. Life is lived by changing places. We must show some concern for others. This is what we're about as a community. This is our strength. In the gangs, the gangs are just groups of friends showing some concern for others. If they deliver cannabis on a deals on wheels service, then again they're showing concern for others. The cannabis is overpriced because of its criminality, but the authorities want to break up any group that we form, which they call a gang they will call us terrorists. Now we're exposing their violence. They will unfortunately be under more orders to attack us and be more violent. They'll bring in the army or something. Same goes for health care. No concern for others. Abandon. This is the evil of evolution or evolutionary theory, the evolutionary dogma that we're faced with. You know, dogma of the survival of the fittest and let the others go to the wall. So showing no concern for others is psychopathic. Psychopathic. Our society our rulers are psychopathic in homelessness and health care. They are psychopathic. They have no concern for others and they have no concern for others in us, the community. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. The next danger I see that we face is political correctness. You know, the acceptance of other people's religions. This is a dangerous doctrine. This is a non-violent movement. We should not accept any violent images. Christianity is a violent religion. Christianity is not a divine revelation. Christianity is an invention of the Romans. They crucified Jesus. There was no resurrection. It is not mentioned in the early Gospels. And then the Romans invented Christianity by tagging on the doctrines of virgin birth and resurrection, both of which never happened. So we must see that the violent images of Christianity do not come into our community. We must not idly sit back and let hear people talk about Jesus as the saviour. They're not saving anybody. They are recruiting and tithing the poor and vulnerable. They're exploiting our fellow man. They bully, conversion is bullying. They bully people into the fear of death with guilt 
and then say, Jesus has conquered death. You must believe in Jesus. Jesus is the only way. This is bullying. This is bullying. The, the gospel is a snare. Fishers of men are predators of men. All Christian preachers money shark the poor and vulnerable by tithes. All Christian preachers groom children by telling them their mothers are sinners. They tell them their mothers are sinners. This is attacking the very fundamental relationships within our families and communities. We should not tolerate the violent images of Christianity or any of its horrific doctrines. It's human sacrifice. It's zombie light rising from the dead. It's cannibal communion eating flesh, dead flesh. We'd make anybody vomit. We don't need Jesus. We don't need an imaginary friend. We don't need an intermediary to our loving Father. Our loving Father is our unity, the unity of our community. Equally, we do not need Muslims saying that our unity is Allah and that they have, they're another tyranny. They're another tyranny. They don't want to be individually part of our, our community. They want to dominate our community. But child protection will destroy Christianity just as surely as women's liberation will destroy Islam. But the danger goes deeper. We're brainwashed into this Christian versus Muslim war. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. Both religions are ridiculous. They're fictions. They're tyrannies. Mental tyrannies over their followers to hate and kill each other. To divide our community. You know, it's either the Christians taking over or the Muslims taking over. No, we want neither. We want neither. We should look to prophecy. First of all, we should look to the prophecy of Daniel chapter 2 and see that the stone cut out without hands will smite the image and shatter it to bits, the image of Babylon. So the silicon chip, the stone cut out without hands, will destroy Babylon. All of it, every class of society, all the way up. And this silicon chip, this stone cut out without hands, will grow into a great mountain that fills the whole earth. And that is the World Wide Web, the Internet, that brings our unity with Occupy the Planet, Occupy Together, Occupy Wall Street, the 99%, our humanity against the in inhumanity of this war machine that uses us as cannon ford, fodder, factory fodder, prison fodder, that, that poisons us with its awful food and its horrific religions and horrific divisions so we should this, this is a catharsis we must go through this chasm of catharsis and understand the lies the lies of the police being community police they're Freemason thugs they're psychopathic the lies of homelessness that it's the survival of the fittest, that it's evolution. It's not. It's psychopathic. It shows no concern for others. The same goes for healthcare. It shows no concern for others. Now it's a silicon chip that leads to mass unemployment. So we come to the prophecy of revelations. First of all, the Christ, the true Christ, Rastafari, the true return Christ, Revelations 5, verse 5. 
and the tree of life, cannabis sativa, which is growing in the midst of the street. In other words, in people's houses, in the houses of the rich, in their spare rooms. And then, obviously, it's delivered by the gangs. And then it says, and growing on either side of the river. That means on both sides of the tracks, in both classes of society, the upper and the lower. So they're using the cannabis laws against the poor. They, you know, they, they've got another clamp down on the use of medicinal cannabis. That shows how psychopathic they are, that they're prepared to deny medicine. But they impose their medication, which kills the imagination and is addictive and makes a lot of money for them. And his brutality itself. If you've seen Zeitgeist moving forward, you'll see that they're predict he's predicting their 65% unemployment. So there are no more jobs. This mass unemployment is here to stay. We need to change society. We need to change education. We need to change society. We need to stop the militaristic structure of society in the churches and the schools. We as a community need to take over, but we need to go through this catharsis. A lot of us, you know, as baby boomers, have lived with World War II and then 9-11. Now we learn that World War II was started by American money. There was no Hitler's, you know, German economic miracle. It was financed by American money through Prescott Bush and George Herbert Walker Bush. And then, you know, what happened? Pearl Harbor, they allowed Pearl Harbor to happen. And then the Americans came into the war late. After they'd set up Hitler's war machine, they set up the war And then they came in late and took control of Europe and built bases everywhere. And we were in debt to them. And their great war machine of their economy was struggling, uh, chugging along. And their families, their bushes and their, you know, all their, in all the ruling elite were making money. And then their grandson, George Herbert Walker Bush, staged the 9-11 fake terrorist attacks. I mean, does anybody really believe a ragged in a cave, you know, herding goats could order NORAD to stand down so that the planes could fly across America to fly into the towers? And then two planes crash into two towers and three towers all collapse. You know, a controlled demolition we all recognize, we all can see. Look at the video of the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. We need a new inquiry just to expose the truth so we go through the catharsis. We need to go through the catharsis of the lies that have brutalized us so that we can have a healthy, loving and free community. But Rastafari said, the Christians and the Muslims must unite to defeat the enemy. The Christians and the Muslims must unite to defeat the enemy. The enemy is that tyranny, that ruling fascist elite, the tyranny that plans to sacrifice the, the whole of the earth and build the Mars colony to transfer them their command and control and then return to take control of the earth. So as far as they're concerned, you know, we as human beings, as mankind, are dispensable. Totally dispensable. So this is our festival of light, our festival of life. This is our revolution. We will occupy Wall Street forever.